Okay, sir. Can I uh, share my screen? Oh, yes. Uh, excuse me, I'll be, I'll be putting my video on and off for uh, quite often, maybe to check one, two, three, but uh, I'm around. Okay. Yeah, thank you. All right, all right, guys. Um, uh, for uh, those who are new to this uh, platform, my name is Dr. Paul Easterling, and this is part of our Indigenous Knowledge course. Uh, we spent the first couple of weeks talking about um, Indigenous Knowledge uh, in uh, Africa, uh, particularly we did week one with religion and um, we did a week two with uh, uh, architecture uh, and a couple other issues. Uh, this week we're doing uh, the pioneering of science. How you doing, Frankie? <laughs> we're doing a uh, uh, pioneering of science and medicine. And we'll also touch a little bit on uh, astronomy uh, towards the end of the discussion. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll stop. And um, we'll, we'll discuss as we go along, all right? All right, so um, one of the earliest records of uh, medicine, uh, traditional medicine on the continent of Africa uh, comes from Kemet, and that's uh, in uh, Egypt. That is Egypt. Um, uh, in Egypt, the physician replaced the magician, all right? So before uh, Egypt was able to compile all this knowledge into um, uh, practicable uh, medicine, uh, the discipline of medicine, you know, they, they relied, like a lot of people, on, on prayer, uh, magic, and so forth. And this is just part of our natural evolution as human beings. We all started out uh, focused on the, the mythical, and then we work towards the more rational. So uh, the physician, as it says, the physician replaced the magician. Um, and it, uh, the rationalization of Egyptian medicine was never complete. And that is to say that it is an ongoing discipline. It's, it's you're constantly having to learn with medicine. Um, and we see that right now in the present day, we're still learning, especially with the, uh, the um, uh, the COVID going on, we're, we're still learning about it, right? So, so disciplines like medicine and uh, other disciplines and other sciences are, are never fully complete. It's a constant learning process. All right. So uh, the father of uh, modern medicine, uh, ancient and modern medicine, is known as Imhotep. All right. This is uh, he comes from the first uh, dynastic period of Kemet. Uh, I believe he uh, uh, worked under uh, Pharaoh Zoser, Zoser, that's Z-O-S-E-R, Zoser. So it was around the early part of the first dynastic period. And uh, his, um, his discipline or his uh, prowess as a physician was well known in the ancient world. Uh, it says, here's a quote, um, uh, uh, Theophrastus, uh, Fritus, uh, Diocordes, and Galen uh, perpetua uh, perpetually cite the prescriptions that they received from Egyptian physicians that they had learned by consulting the works conserved in libraries of the Temple of Imhotep at Memphis, and that's Memphis in uh, Egypt, which was still accessible in the second century AD and were seven centuries and where several centuries before. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, was taught. So Hippocrates, as is the known as the uh, modern uh, father of medicine, is where we get the Hippocratic, uh, the Hippocratic oath. 
he studied under Imhotep. He studied Imhotep's ideas. And, uh, you know, this is another example of, of you know, Euro, uh, uh, Eurocentrism kind of overshadowing uh, what Africa has, has been working on well before. Um, and again, it's not to take anything away from what Hipp uh, Hippocrates did, but he studied under Imhotep. So again, just giving credit to where credit is due, uh, the modern day ancient and modern day medicine, uh, father of medicine is, uh, is Imhotep and Hippocrates uh, studied under him. All right. <clears throat> um, more on uh, Imhotep. As a physician and administrator concerned with the major construction projects, uh, Imhotep would have been in a position not unfamiliar to some physicians on occupational medicine today. Now, uh, just stop right there. I'll give you a little context. Not only was Imhotep um, a, a dynamic physician, but he was also very much involved in the architecture of the great uh, pyramids, uh, uh, the pyramid uh, of, of Khnufu, I think it was. Um, so he had a chance to work on uh, those who were hurt or injured in the process of building. So I guess it's kind of like two birds, one stone. He, he uh, helped design the uh, pyramid and in the process of that, you know, people naturally get hurt and, you know, he was able to work on those who got hurt in the process of building uh, the step pyramid. And I'll just continue reading. Uh, it is known that the work crews on the pyramid were subject to injury, moving and lifting great stone blocks and that they received medical care. It's postulated that Imhotep took advantage of this position as his administrator, engineer, physician to study systematically the injuries sustained by workers during construction of the pyramid and that these observations form the basis uh, for papyrus uh, that later formed the Edwin Smith document. And the Edwin Smith document is a uh, document uh, that was translated by Edwin Smith um, focused on uh, um, Imhotep's uh, uh, medical teachings, his, his ways of healing, uh, um, uh, bone breaks, uh, 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 inf infirmaries with the, uh, um, with the stomach or, or so forth, whatever uh, Imhotep wrote about on his papyrus uh, for med uh, medicine, Edward Smith uh, um, translated. And, you know, this is where we got the evidence today of what uh, Imhotep had, uh, had presented. All right. Uh, do we have any questions so far? You good? All right. All right. Just this uh, a little inquiry. Yes. Yeah, from the first slide that you presented, uh, I, I'm curious about the, the magician. Uh, when you cited something about magician, I, I didn't get that concept very well, how it related with the medicine. Okay, let me uh, go back. And okay, yes. That will be okay. Yeah, um, th that is just to say uh, uh, the first line in Kemet, the physician replaced the... Uh, 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 magician. That is just to say that before we have the uh, rational critical thought that led to uh, real medical knowledge, real medical science, we relied on magicians uh, and, and, and uh, sorcerers, you know, to help us. And this is just part of our evolution, right? Before we understood, um, you know, the dynamics of medicine, the dynamics of the human body, you know, what we thought we were, we were being ailed by uh, maybe heartburn, we thought it was the gods punishing us, right? Um, this is just part of our natural evolution to to replace uh, um, fantasy or, or, or folklore with real science um, and, and real technology. So it's just referring to the natural progression of, uh, of, our, of our knowledge. Does that make sense? Is it, is, it, is it similar to the idea of believing in the supernatural yes right so like maybe yes. people used to believe like uh there was a supernatural being that was sending like raining water on people pouring water down or throwing fire as thunder but right. but then with the natural science we've now learned right. how rain form we've now right. learned how thunder come about right but right. before then uh, we, it was it was sort of magical or supernatural yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. It's just a natural progression of human knowledge. Before we understand what we're actually seeing, we kind of attribute it to gods or magic. And, and then we learn a, a, a more, a, a, when we gain more knowledge, we uh, connect dots and, you know, we make uh, better connections, more critical academic connections. That's all I was saying. So it's just moving from the transition of, of folklore and legend to science and knowledge. That's all. <clears throat> all right. As mentioned, uh, the Edwin Smith papyrus that uh, focused on um, uh, medicine is a roll of 15 feet long and writing on both sides, consisting of 22 columns of nearly, of nearly 500 lines of text. And that is text dealing with uh, uh, med the med uh, medicinal practices. The text contains 48 illustration, illust illustrative cases dealing with various traumatic and accidental injuries to the head, face, neck, arm, chest, shoulder, and spinal, spinal column in, order, in that order. And each, each case is arranged in a logical, quite modern fashion, including a descriptive, a descriptive heading and provisional diagnosis, results of examination, uh, diagnosis, uh, prognosis, treatment, and glosses over the archaic terms used. And that's, again, this is the, the level of organization that was put into medical knowledge, all right? Um, medical knowledge, again, is, is foundationally important for uh, any human society, because if you can't keep your society uh, healthy, then what are you building on, right? All your society, your, your, your people will die off and you will have no offspring, and then what you know as a, a society will be, will be done, all right? So um, the uh, ancient uh, Egyptians, um, clearly understood the importance of, of medicine, importance of treatment, and, and took, uh, took the practice of medicine very seriously. And right now we are sitting um, as the children uh, uh, of all their medical knowledge. You know, we, we're benefit, benefactors of uh, early medical knowledge that stretches back 5,000 years. All right. and it's not to say there haven't been advancements in the meantime, because there has but the foundations of, of medical knowledge can be traced back to ancient Kemet. All right. I just, I'll just let somebody else in. All right, any questions before I move forward? All right. I think there's a question, uh, there's a question that uh... Juliet put, Juliet Rogers has put mm -hmm. question. I don't know whether Professor you have seen that. See, there's one that, um... <laughs> he put a question, Juliet uh, Rogers put a question over there. I can, I can read the question if you, if you like. Yeah, yeah, I don't see it. Okay, the question is um, from Anyone Juliet. Mean? I would like to know how the translation was able to be done from the hieroglyphics to the modern languages, please. Uh, how it was done? Yeah, from the hieroglyphics to the modern languages, how, how it was done. Um, uh, there are, um, I, don't exa I don't know exactly what they're called, but there are, uh, um, what are they called? Uh, a, a guide for translating uh, the hieroglyphics that still exist to the day. I have a colleague who is a very adept at uh, translating the ancient hieroglyphics. It's not, um, it's not hieroglyphics and writing is not a dead language. It's not spoken anymore, or is very rarely spoken. But um, translating those ancient hieroglyphics is actually uh, not as complicated of a process as it might as it might seem. I myself do not have that yeah, yeah. skill. I myself do not have that skill, but there are others. There are others that do. Can we put it on? There we go. Okay, yeah. Um, I myself are uh, I'm not adept at uh, translating hieroglyphics, but I do have colleagues that are. So it's not um, it's not a lost art. It's not a lost art translating the hieroglyphics to modern day English. All right.
All right, moving uh, moving on from uh, Komet. All right, so uh, there are, um, traditional medicine again is is, is replete throughout uh, across the continent. All right, this um, just just imagine you know people growing and living for centuries, for millennia and centuries. You know they had to have some way to to treat themselves. So the idea of 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 medicine on the on the continent, even in an ancient sense, is not a foreign one. Um, it's been around for for centuries. Uh, traditional health systems include the Wambai of the Aousa armies, the uh, uh, Babar sur uh, surgeons of the Nupe uh, people, and the uh, Adu Ahusa uh, uh, and the uh, Alaseje of the Yorubas, and the uh, Dibiba of the Ibos. All right, these are different types of um, medical practitioners in traditional uh, African societies, particularly those in Nigeria. Uh, traditional African or, or African tradi traditional medicine involves collecting, conserving, utilizing, and the application of medical plants for the cure, prevention, and promotion of physical and spiritual well-being. Uh, practitioners of this mode of healthcare are christened traditional healers. The trained herbalist is capable of uh, capable of identifying different herbs from one another. Tradi the traditional medicine can therefore be seen as a total. Uh, totality of practice measures, ingredients, and procedures of all kinds, which enable Africans to guide, uh, to guard, excuse me, against diseases, alleviate suffering, and to cure themselves. In the main source of health care in Nigerian grassroots, especially in the villages where cons uh, considerable percentages of Nigerians live. Uh, again, that is to say that uh, there were many methods of traditional healing um, that, that stretched back for centuries. And traditional healing is still a very much important part of, of African tradition uh, uh, in the modern day. And that's uh, in the, on the continent as well as in the diaspora. So I'll give you uh, an example. So, um, and we'll talk about this further as we, as we go along. Uh, a lot of uh, traditional healing uh, in modern day, um, we, go to the traditional healer to get the herbs, the roots, or whatever to make us feel better. But we also combine that with maybe going to the doctor and seeking some advice. And we also combine that with, with, with prayer, right? We combine all these things to help ourselves heal. And I, I would, um, traditional medicine is, is very much based on, uh, on science, but I, I would have to argue that the state of a person's uh, spirit is very much important in the process of healing, all right? It's, it's not simply, you know, uh, um, giving a person uh, a certain medicines or certain herbs, but, you know, there's something in the spirit that, that has to want to heal as well. And traditional uh, African healers uh, keep, keep these things in mind, all right? So it's not just about healing the ailment, it's also kind of counseling and talking this person through whatever they're healing. All right. So in, in my, in my view, that's, that's holistic healing, right? So it's not just healing the body, but as well giving attention to the spirit, to whatever may be going on in that person's heart, that person's mind that may also afflict or affect them. All right. And, uh, and modern day healing takes this into serious consideration as well especially uh, uh, nowadays with more traditional healings uh, being a part of our, uh, of our modern society. <clears throat> Any questions, concerns, comments? All right, moving forward. So one of the problems uh, that modern medicine uh, has with traditional medicine um, and again, you, we can talk about this and, and, and tease out uh, some of the uh, issues. Um, is the uh, a problem? Well, there's a couple of problems, and I'll just list them off. So, uh, inadequate documentation. That is, practitioners re practitioners rely mostly on memory, which is vulnerable to medical errors in diagnosis and prescription. And uh, this lends credence to the uh, issue that you know African uh, um, knowledge is usually oral. It's usually oral. We we pass knowledge on orally through the generations. 
So the issue that the West has with this is, you know, it needs to be written down and made into a more precise science. And I'm not going to say that that's wrong because, you know, those things are important. But I will say that uh, um, it is critical that, you know, these practitioners have this knowledge and are, have been able to heal for centuries, uh, um, you know, without, you know, need for degrees or, 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 or need for, for uh, you know, um, uh, extreme uh, governmental oversight. So, uh, you know, we're, we're just, we have always been working on what we have and, and you know, making, making a way with whatever we have around us, all right? Um, another issue is uh, preparation. The mode of preparation uh, is uh, not very hygienic and there is a possibility for infection into entering into uh, drug preparation. Uh, this again uh, goes to uh, some of the spaces that uh, medicine is, is developed on the continent. Um, again, I, I take issue with this uh, just because, you know, African people have been healing themselves for centuries and, you know, guarding against infection is just one of the things that, you know, is, is kind of obvious that must be uh, 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 looked at or, or, um, or dealt with. Uh, standardization. Lack of standardization in ethics in dosage, uh, uh, general practice and training may lead to potential toxicity and uh, therapy failure. And again, this goes back to, you know, writing things down, um, the importance of keeping records. Um, measurability, the drugs produced uh, lack measures when they are being administered. And lastly, it has been alleged that traditional drugs, aside, um, side effect cannot easily uh, determine easily be determined as well as the uh, expiration date. Um, again, this is just the, the, the push and pull that's going on with modern medicine and traditional medicine. But again, um, modern medicine comes from traditional practices. Modern medicine still uses some of the same herbs uh, that, are, that traditional healers use in, in varying degrees. They might create a chemical or add something else to the medicine uh, to make it what it is. But uh, a lot of our medicines come straight from uh, the herbs that we, we have uh, laying about with us. Um, and the last point, with all the problems facing orthodox medicine, such as uh, cost of treatment, inadequate funding, inadequate human and material resources, et cetera, herbal medicines should be logically seen as embraced and necessary alternative. Hence, it should be developed as a simple, cheap, and effective alternative, all right? Um, and I, I I'm not sure about the uh, medical system uh, on the continent, but in the United States, everything here is extremely expensive. So if you want to get treated, you better, if you do not have uh, um, a medical insurance, uh, you better have uh, uh, some gold under your bed or something like that, because you will have to pay for it. So that is to say that traditional means of medicine, as long as, um, as long as uh, medical practices are expensive as they are, traditional means of medicine will never die because people will need treatment. People will need cost-effective treatment, a cost-effective uh, treatment that has a history of, of being useful. Is there a question? I heard somebody. Is there a question? Hey, Mr. Evans, how you doing? I guess I just wanted to... Uh, that's one thing. Uh, welcome, Evans, uh, in the class. Uh, what I wanted to know is, uh, instead of calling it like uh, traditional medicine, no, the picture people will have about it is uh, it's kind of something that, you know, it's, it, when you just say traditional medicine, it, it gives a lot of uh, feeling to somebody. Yeah, the imagery uh, it creates in our heads is, is one of a witch doctor, right? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, uh, in this modern day, as we are in, uh, uh, we have seen that uh, the European education system do refer to these people, uh, those give medicine as doctors. Why don't we just call them doctors instead of giving that name uh, traditional medicine? Uh, uh, say, uh, say the last part again. Instead of just calling, uh, giving the title to them as uh, traditional medicine givers or traditional healers, why don't we call them doctors? 
the right. I, I actually, I actually agree with that. Um, the only reason they they don't call them doctors because um, there's a certain amount of discipline that goes into getting these degrees or whatever. But as well, you know, there's a certain amount of discipline that goes into a medical practice on the continent, right? Uh, the doctors, the traditional doctors, were not just people who woke up one day and said, "I'm going to start healing people." No, these people went to went through a process. They they were uh they were uh they went to learn from the through the ancient sages or, or whoever the doctor was in their in their village. They sat before them and learned the, the traditions and, and and um you know was able to track uh I hear I hear the background noise because somebody um yeah thank you very much. Um so, you know, uh, practice of uh, traditional medicine was not just done, again, it wasn't just done willy-nilly. Um, those who wanted to engage in the process, um, you know, sat at the feet of, of the sages before them to learn, and they, they learned the, the, the discipline, all right? There are secret societies in, uh, um, in, in Africa who, that deal specifically with medical practices, just as there, there are some that that deal with you know architecture or, or, or different aspects of, of life. This is this is part of how humans have learned for uh, for centuries. So, um, and I understand the the notion or the the word traditional medicine um, might you know bring ideas of a witch doctor, but in the United States, um, what we call it here is New Age medicine. We, and it's we just we changed the name so we didn't have the negative connotation of, of a witch doctor or something like that. We just call it new age medicine, but it's still the same thing. It uses crystals and herbs to try to heal ailments, which is the, pretty much the same thing that um, traditional healers did. They just changed the name. Uh, so it had a more positive connotation to it. It was so it could be sold as a product. All right. That's the type of things that that we have going on here in in the states. You know, <clears throat> I think. Um, oh, I think uh, Juliet's raised her hand. But Juliet, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, you can go ahead. Then I can. I'll go after you. Okay. Um, greetings, everyone here. Greetings. I want, to ask, I want to ask a question. Why is it because in accordance to history? Uh, I was meant to understand that medicine actually started in Africa. But why is it that our own uh, field of medicine, our own medicine is referred to alternative medicine? Why? If it should be, it should, if it should be alternative medicine, it should be the modern medicine because the modern medicine already met uh, the traditional medicine going on yeah um i would argue that um I, I first of all i agree with you i agree wholeheartedly with what you're saying i would argue that the reason why um there's a separation between uh traditional medicine and modern medicine is um certain certain people who uh who have a vested interest in uh making money off of medicine are trying to draw a hard line between what is traditional and what is modern in order to uh, um, sell their product, in order to to ensure that they are seen as the authorities over medicine. All right? I think is 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 merely just a way of 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 making money and and um, kind of uh, reducing what is traditional or what is African to something less than something that's ignorant something that's that's uh not to be trusted i think again uh, i think it's just uh, um one of the aspects of white supremacy that we are still suffering with but traditional medicine is is still it's a huge thing across the world it's still here in the united states a lot of african americans uh do not trust doctors <laughs> so and actually let me uh move on a little bit uh to the um uh, uh, to Ghana, um, and then we'll, we'll keep talking as we um, 
uh, as we move along. Uh, in Ghana, traditional healthcare is holistic, and that's an important. It's a holistic one that integrates people's ethic, ethics, religious, moral, and cultural values. Um, uh, Ayupe uh, remarked that many Ghanaians believe that an individual's health is linked to the metaphysical and supernatural world. Uh, with Olu uh, Ola Makoma, uh, the creator, or Abasum, the deities and divinities, and the ancestral spirits. Meaning, if if you're not good with with God, if you've done something to anger the gods or anger the spirits, you will be struck with a malady. Um, naturally, with such beliefs, diseases have a spiritual dimension on many Ghanaians. In Ghana, as in most African countries, it is estimated that more than 60% of population still uses traditional medicine in many instances to help meet some of the primary health care needs. Again, it's just, this stuff still goes on with African Americans in the United States as well. As a result, many people who use both traditional and orthodox uh, treatments, uh, uh, traditional medicine and orthodox treatments, depending on what is wrong with them at a, a point in time. In fact, it will be accurate to assert that more than 90% of the population of Ghana has used some form of traditional medicine at one point in their life. And um, so let me just uh, put the question out there. Uh, how many have used uh, traditional medicine uh, for uh, maladies uh, that you've experienced in your life at one point or another? I have. Uh, uh, Kalu, Dr. Kalu has, anybody else? I know I have. After my mom was also treated uh, when she got some problems, was treated actually. She went to a traditional healer? No, no. Her sister. Her sister, right. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? I can't hear. What, what I'm saying is, you still use the traditional medicine. Yeah, wow. yes. Yes, yes, and a lot, a lot of people do. That's a very important part, and it's not, it's not just in Africa, um, Asia, all over Asia, all over Latin America, uh, again, here in the United States, uh, and I'm sure uh, places in Europe where they call it New Age medicine, uh, people use traditional, uh, traditional healing. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's traditional healing and modern medicine, you know, it, it is best in my in my view, in my opinion, in my perspective, it's best that there is a, a, a way to find a, a, a synergy between both, right? Traditional medicine and modern medicine, in order to to be able to appeal to everybody's uh, uh, senses. Um, traditional healing in the Americas, uh, particularly with voodoo. Um, it is a supernatural, there's, there are supernatural illnesses and natural illnesses, right? So a, a supernatural illnesses uh, comes from a wayward spirit or individual casting spells with nefarious intentions. Those involved, uh, those involve spirits and they can be appeased through bar or bargained with or they involve an issue with another person that may be worked out or resolved uh, for healing. Um, again, this is something that we still do in the United States. If, if you're feeling in some type of way, uh, it, it may be because, you know, of a relationship that you, uh, that, that went bad and that you need to address that. And, and modern medicine nowadays is, is starting to come around to this fact that not every uh, physical malady is necessarily caused by a disease, but it may be something spiritual, psychological that the person is dealing with that is causing that. Uh, and again, this is, this is something that still goes on to this day. Um, uh, natural illnesses, however, uh, come from God and God cannot be bargained with. So as to say, some illnesses um, are a bit more serious and uh, need a, a, a different type of attention, right? So uh, we have two types uh, that, that, that we deal with, something that is more serious, that you will need medical attention, um, um, you know, something natural coming straight from God and something that's, you know, supernatural, something that's spiritual in nature, uh, uh, something that you need to address in your family and your own life, something that's going on 
that's causing a, a, a malady. <clears throat> um, again, I'll just you know speak for myself. Um, in, in for us in the United States, uh, when we're sick, uh, we we go to first you know what's going on in your life. Uh, is there something going on uh, with another person that you need to deal with in order to help you heal? Uh, we we um, gather herbs together. We place it at certain parts of our body. We'll sleep on it. We'll try to sweat it out. Uh, these things still exist. So traditional medicine, uh, regardless of the modern, modern day, still very much exists. Any questions, comments? All right, let's move forward. All right, so now we're going to uh, touch on a little bit of astronomy, uh, the, the issues of uh, time and space. Uh, um, so the understanding of the movement of the planet through space is paramount to the uh, maintenance of agricultural integrity. So that is to say that uh, African people first uh, uh, dealt with astronomy at a very early age, just so we could um, um, deal with our agriculture. If we don't understand the, the, the falling of the seasons, the, the rising of spring and summer and fall and winter and how the stars and, and, and the, the uh, um, uh, heavenly bodies interact with the planet, uh, that knowledge has helped us to, to feed ourselves. The, the basic foundation of, of human life is to, have have food and and that was dealt with a lot through just watching the sky we were watching the sky and um in the process of us watching the sky we, we began to see patterns and that's where we get the development of the first calendars that come out of of Kemet and of the Nile Valley and again the only way to create a calendar is to observe uh the heavenly bodies so just based on the evidence uh, that is presented to us uh, from um, ancient Egypt, we had a keen understanding of what was going on in the sky. All right. So uh, uh, to to add to this, um, beyond uh, simple simple uh, keeping time and the the agriculture, we have the divine building a way of of bringing heaven down to earth so um look at this, the pyramids of giza let me move this just so you can have a better clearer uh view so the pyramids of giza are aligned in such a way that they are exactly like uh the stars of orion's belt that is you see one two three with the third one just off center just like orion's belt one, two, three, with the third one just just off center or just off or just off alignment. Again, so this is a way of bringing have the heavens down to earth, right? Or even it's a way of paying homage to the gods. All right, the the precision of what it takes to to map the stars and then to display that map or to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, lay out this map on the planet uh, that again is is extremely difficult to do and is uh, one of the modern uh, or the uh, the marvels of the ancient world um, through this architecture uh, the the uh, development of these pyramids of Giza they were able to figure out the the earth's true north all right um, as well they align the north and south with the biggest stars in in the uh, Ursa Minor, Ursa Major, that's the uh, Little Dipper, and the the Big Dipper. All right, so they they aligned, uh, they they had aligned what was Earth uh, North and South with the the stars. They located this at the center of the of the world's mass, so they understood the world's mass by by how they measured uh, uh, the planet, um, the length of cubits. Uh, for the Great Pyramids, that is the long side of the Great Pyramids, uh, as adds up directly to the 365-day calendar 
year that we still use to this day. So the long side of the Great Pyramid that you see here, long side of the Great Pyramid, adds up in cubits to the amount of uh, days we have in the year. Now, and then the length and width, length and width of the pyramids correspond to the exact fraction of the latitude and longitude of the Earth at the equator, which is equal to the circumference of the equator and the radius uh, from the north uh, northern hemisphere. I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Isling. I mean, this is the very first time someone is showing me this image. I have been trying to, because I've, I've I have read about this. I was trying to figure it out in my mind. So if you don't mind, repeat that again, because I am so excited to see this. You said um, what adds up to the number of the of, of the years. You know, use your cursor again. I, I, I yeah, missed. the um, the the length of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. So uh, the the length of the pyramid right here in cubits. All right, and the cubit is not it's not a huge thing, uh, but if you measure it in cubits, it adds up to 365.242 cubits, which is, of course, the exact amount of days that we have in our, in, in our calendar year. So the ancient, uh, the ancient Egyptians understood these things, again, 5,000 years ago. This is, this is the type of knowledge that they were developing 5,000 years ago. And um, the pyramids, uh, correspond to a number of things on the planet. Again, the alignment of the uh, Orion's belt, which I, uh, I've always thought, like you, I've always thought it was fascinating. Um, also, the uh, location of the pyramids as uh, the coordinates, and I should have wrote it down, um, is the exact number uh, of the uh, speed of light uh, meters per second. I should have wrote the number down, but I didn't. Um, I have to fix that. Uh, so uh, the ancient Egyptians um, understood a lot about what was going on in the heavens and tried to uh, um, display that on the earth. Um, again, it's still a mystery as to how they understood this or, or exactly how they came to their conclusions. <clears throat> but um, it is definitely worth noting that, that these are... Of the facts of, of the situation. Any questions with that? Hmm. All right. We're just uh, moving forward. Um, so, uh, the astronomy of creation. So, again, I had this idea uh, uh, about 10 plus years back, um, just based on this. Uh, thing right here, and my uh, Ghanaian brothers and sisters will know exactly what this is, the Jinyame. And the Jinyame is, um, is representative of, of the golden ratio, as we see right here, the spiral of creation that we see over and over again throughout creation, this spiral that is that's like DNA. And it's called the golden ratio because it's a infinitely repeating um, of fraction or ratio um, that, that, it, that occurs in nature somehow. It's, it's called the golden ratio of God's ratio because uh, of, of, of uh, its perfection. So the ratio is um, A to B is the same as A to A and B and so on and so forth. So A plus B will equal, the ratio from A plus B is to A is the same from A to B. I hope, I hope I'm not losing anybody with that. So if I add this full length and compare it to A, the differentiation will be the same, exact same as if I compare A to B. And that's the golden ratio that dominates uh, not only the planet, uh, but uh, the heavens as well. This ratio, this, this, this balance of harmony, all right? Um, this can be seen, again, uh, this is the ratio that can be seen in the uh, Jinyame, in the uh, form of Jinyame. 
as well as the path of Sirius, which we talked about last week, and the Dogon and their ability to diagram uh, the Sirius stars. We see here we see at the bottom. And this is this is God's ratio, and it's still kind of a mystery as to why uh, what is what this is actually trying to tell us. Um, but the fact that it's there and that African people had a clear understanding of what it was, uh, uh, I think is uh, definitely noteworthy. Definitely noteworthy. Any questions with that? Because that's, that's, that's a lot that I just dropped on you. Again, um, just to go a little further, my uh, general thought was that this uh, genia may look like a, uh, a, uh, a length of DNA. So we all know what DNA looks like, right? Right here. So if I, if I look at this DNA on its head, so if I got a strand of DNA, but I take it and look at it straight on to where it's a tube, it will look like genia may. This helicoil spir uh, spiral that goes on forever. And so the obvious question becomes, well, how did the Ghanaians know this? Because Jinyame is, is, is God, right? It means accept God, only God. And if they understood this as God, and we can understand that this kind of looks like this from a different angle, or maybe even we go with the spiral galaxy right there, right? Spiral galaxy kind of looks like Jinyame. What what were they what what were they on to? What were they studying? What what insight did they have that brought them to that conclusion? And I'm asking these questions rhetorically because I I do not know the answer, uh, but I see the connection, and um, seeing that connection I think is is very very important for us understanding um, our place in the world and our place in the universe. So I'll, I'll stop there. Um, allow for questions and conversation um because i think these are really really heavy issues uh but i do not want to move further than than uh we can go so please please questions concerns comments criticisms Anybody? Um, let's see. Let's see. So, okay. So I think I wanted to say earlier, about, um, with regards to why um, indigenous African uh, traditional medicine is not uh, included in modern day medicine and and what we should be doing about that i think we should step take a test a, a, a step back and think about the alchemists so i mean europe 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 had their own systems um in fact the, if you look at the alchemists you know theirs was just completely based on sorcery. It was completely based on, on magic. Uh, but, but while they were practicing um, alchemis alchemism, they stumbled upon some truths. So it was, it was by, by stumbling. If you compare, and then obviously over time, uh, they stopped um, al alchemists and their work and the transition into proper science and chemistry and all. I think Africans didn't quite make that transition or they were on their way to making that transition, um, but were interrupted by you know, slavery and colonialism. We shouldn't for forget that. Yeah. But, there's a, but for me, there's a clear difference between African traditional systems and alchemism while alchemism was purely sorcery and and um um do i say mystical base 
the traditional African system was a mixture of both uh, rational thoughts. There was some rational thinking in, in, in that. And there was also some mystical approaches in that. It was a combination of that. Yeah. So, um, so I think when, so things, so the construction that you just showed, like the, the pyramid of, of, of these, uh, I mean, that, I mean, that, is, that is purely rational thought. <laughs> I mean, right. there is no, you know, there is no um, mystical uh, approach involved in that. Now, now, now they, they use their rational uh, thoughts maybe to give some, uh, to give some credence or to sort of recognize uh, the, what we call the numinous or, mm. or, or their God, right? But it was, I mean, not to do that, that calculation is what it is. It is, a, yeah. it is pure natural uh, science and, and calculation. And, and so I think that's, so that's what we need to start doing. And if, as, as, a, as a university, what I, I think we ought to be doing now is helping our practitioners, out. right? People who are involved in indigenous knowledge uh, uh, and medicine, helping them. Can you hear me? Yeah, you go. You're in and out. I can, you're hear crazy, you yeah. can you hear you're me now? Is, is it good now? Yeah, you're. Oh, yeah, so I can hear you now. Okay. So I was saying though, I mean, we should have departments, right? African universities should have the departments and should have instructors and professors who are, who are encouraged to study these approaches yeah. and include them, document them, uh, validate them and include them. I mean, there are gonna be some stuff that will check out and some may not check out and that's fine. I don't think we should be afraid of, of I mean, we are all learning, you know? And I mean, so, I have, so I've used, uh, there are some leaves that we use in, in, in Nigeria called Dongorayo, you know, which are sick. You know, so I'm sure there is there's some potent medicine in that. Let's use mass spectrometry. Let's use different right. instruments to interrogate those leaves and figure out what is the active right. element in that. That is that is how they make drugs today. Right. You know? Exactly right. That's exactly right. So and uh yeah, um and the reason why uh, just to add to that, the reason why I uh I you know um Combine the the medicine chapter with the astronomy chapter, is is that they they connect in in um in I won't say odd ways, but they connect because you know what's going on in the heavens, um the ancient Egyptians thought and and and, and uh, um, many African societies thought that what's going on in the heavens affects what's going on in our bodies. All right, now we we got this thing called astrology that goes on now where we you know. If you're a Taurus born under Capricorn on Tuesday, you're gonna have a bad day. I, 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 that's that's like that's you know stuff for children. But the ancient commit, uh, uh, commit, uh, commissions um, and many other societies uh, took those things seriously as to understand you know just how our bodies are connected with the heavens, and that is to understand that our all of creation is connected. All of creation is connected, and, that, and that's. The important part I think that gets lost is is creation is connected. If we understand that we are a part of this world and a part and therefore um, a part of this universe, then then yeah, it makes sense that something that's going on in the sky can somehow affect me because I'm connected with that thing. And it, it gives, it's not to say that you know the gods are coming down to punish us. No, it's just to say that we're made up of the same stuff. Where our bodies our, our bodies are a product of this planet. And this planet is a product of, of an exploding star, right? So if, if that is the case, if that is the truth, the science fiction, the science uh, scientific truth that we uh, have accepted now, then we must study these things to, to, to further understand how, how we connect with the rest of the universe. And I, I don't think that that, that is, um, that sorcery is just science that we don't understand. And, and that's what we call sorcery. Things that we yet don't understand, we call we call sorcery. If our ancient ancestors can see what we're doing now, right at this moment, talking through boxes of light and shadow, 
you know, they would say, oh, that's sorcery, you know, that we'd be condemned to death. But we, all we have to do is explain, no, it's not sorcery. We've developed these things over time, and, and, and that's okay. Sorcery is just science that we do not yet understand, uh, is, is, is the point. And that's why I wanted to connect these two dots uh, with medicine and astronomy, because, you know, it, they're, they connect in, in dynamic ways that, that I fully, you know, I don't fully understand and that we are still discovering as, as a human species. What, what you just said here is, is powerful. I don't know if people quite appreciate the statement that we are products of the universe. Yes. We are, I mean, we, I mean it's, a, it's a fact. You know, the universe explodes and, and we had you know, the suns and different kind of stars formed together and our, our earth was formed as a result of that explosion. Right. And so we are made of sawdust. We are yeah. literally part yeah. of the universe. That's right. That's right. And that is a connection that, you know, that something that connects everyone to <coughs> nature. That's right. Like if, if all the, all the elements in our body are found in the universe, are found right. in the stars. That is a beautiful thing. Yeah, it, 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 I think it's um, something that we, that we take for granted as, as a human uh, species. Um, I mean, most of our bodies are made of carbon, and carbon is one of the most uh, um, dominant uh, uh, elements in the universe. Carbon, right? We, we, we breathe oxygen and a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen. What does the sun burn? Nitrogen, isn't it? Is it nitrogen or helium? One of the two, right? These things that everything that we have, we have calcium in our bones, and, and we have rocks made of calcium and, and iron, and we have iron in our blood, right? It's we, we're we're nothing more than products of that, and I, I I don't think that some may assume or some may think that that makes us less special, but I think that makes us dynamically special as a species. I, we're we're sitting here talking. Uh, uh, over this, 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 this moment is, is a miracle in itself, how we communicate with each other. And, um, you know, and we're all just, just stardust. We're, we're, we're little pieces of stardust that have come to the point in our evolution to where we are conscious and can start asking questions. And, um, you know, that's just, that's, that's a heavy thought that I, that I like to, those are the heavy thoughts that keep me, um, keep me awake at night. <laughs> Uh, yes, Frankie. Yeah, yeah, I would like to, you know, uh, put a question. Um, yes. I've been, I've been attending uh, a, 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 a streaming by one of uh, the African American uh, by the name Young Faro on his channel. I uh, attended uh, his program, and uh, there was a question somebody raised uh, right from the beginning of our, our lessons. I think I've come to learn that it is just. Uh, uh diminishing the image of the black people that's what i picked but i would like to ask it uh, to you on this platform again uh you know just as we have said about our connection with the with the nature itself the stars and uh, this the, the dust particle that uh, relates to us uh, as human and the yeah. stars but uh, still we have the Eurocentric group of people who still consider, you know, that the pyramid build is something of aliens, of right. aliens origin. I, 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 I just need a little bit of a elaboration on that particular part. As far as uh, why they think what they think? Why they think that the, uh, the, the pyramid is not built by the Africans and um, built by the aliens. Well, okay, so um, so one of the main problems of white supremacy is that um, for white supremacy to be a, uh, to be effective, you have to convince uh, both yourself and the people you are oppressing that they that who you are oppressing is not a human being is not a human being. So how do you do that? Well, you 
start um, obscuring their history. That's one way you do it, so obscuring their history. So um, Egypt, with all its evidence uh, of, of its greatness, um, you take Egypt out of Africa. So you call Egypt the Middle East. Um, and you start making movies, you know, to whether, you know, you have these light-skinned people who are in Egypt doing these things. And, you know, you don't see black people there unless they're enslaved. So you got to control the imagery is what I'm saying. You got to control the imagery. So in addition to that, um, you uh, downplay or just uh, straight up lie uh, about anything else that's come out of Africa that's worth, that's, that's worth something. And so we, we talked about a number of African societies that were great uh, and dynamic. Uh, um, but for a lot of people, it's, this is the first time, you know, when we talk about these things, it's the first they're hearing about it. So suppression of knowledge is key. All right. So not only do I have to lie about your history, but I've, I have to suppress knowledge about your history. I have to cut you off from, from learning about yourself. All right. So that, those are key ways that was done to us in the States. Uh, we were kept from books. Uh, we were told repeatedly over and over again that the people we came from were primitive and animal-like. And that, it, you know, and the evidence to the contrary was either uh, suppressed or um, obscured uh, greatly to uh, make us believe that, that we are not a part of, of that. Um, uh, yeah, so that's, that's, yeah, that's, you know, you obscure the truth and, and you dehumanize the people and then you will be able to, to control them. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, the presentation that you gave about the pyramid of Giza and their alignment with the stars, you know, it actually, uh, remind me again of, uh, the naming of the stars that happened way back at home that people normally call like the Christas have its name in most of uh, the Sudanese tribes. The Chinese tribe, they have the names for those three stars, how they arrange. The only issue I've, I've been able to see from this presentation that uh, our people on the ground have is that uh, these cultures, they are now vanishing, they're disappearing. Where in the evening times, most of the young people will be entitled, you know, to sit near the elders and how the stars are aligned with the season for cultivation and season for like how they they give the difference between the dry season and the wet season yeah. using the stars. Quite this culture is dying off. Uh, at this particular yeah. moment is dying off, and uh, we tend to take less interest in you know sitting and hearing onto this. Yeah, it's so absurd, but I'm grateful to see the importance of this star because. Yeah. Way back, it was taught to us. We we knew how it was counted, but we didn't know that actually it has been in line with also the great pyramid of Giza. Right. It's a mind blowing presentation, and I'm very much grateful for this presentation, yeah. realizing our connection with the nature and the stars itself. Yeah. And what the indigenous people know is something very important, and it's a motivating factor, actually. Yeah, yeah I'm glad. Um, and I think you touched on a very important thing. Um, the the gathering and and telling of stories, uh, I think that that fact itself cannot be overstated. It's important for us to get together and, and talk about these things and 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 tell stories, fables, you know, true and true stories and fables about our own uh, histories, um, in order to uh, uh, you know further develop our culture. I, I, those things are, are they're not fully lost. But um, as you say, they, they are, it's, it's dwindling. Um, and it, those are important things that, that you know, we, sh we should work to regain is those, um, you know, those um, uh, campfire talks, you know, sitting around a fire and talking about these things, you know, um, bathed in the light uh, of a fire. Now we just bathe ourselves in the light of our TVs. <laughs> but, you know, those things are, are important. and. Um, yeah, not to be taken for granted. And, and, and those are the ways we learn. Those are the ways children learn right. um, through those stories. And stories are the most, the most effective and most powerful ways that human beings learn. Right. Because right. they, I mean, 
they they spark our imagination. They spark Absolutely. our imagination, and that is you know that is key. I mean, the imagination ties directly into our spirit, into our souls. Um, and without our imagination, you know, we we will slowly but surely start to die off. So we need to continue to tap into our imagination so we can we can see ourselves doing things, right? If you can see it in your mind's eye, you can you can create it in the world. And that's one of our gifts. Um, um, gifts as a human being, you can call it godly gift, you call it whatever you want, but that's one of our gifts is, you know, we can create what we can imagine. So it is critically important that we tap into um, to our imaginations. In a way, that's sort of what we are doing here too, this exactly. gathering and having discussions, we should not forsake um, the importance of what we are doing is is very critical. Yeah. You know uh, the way I also uh, maybe if if you let me to permit permit me to uh, respond to Frank's um, inquiry about uh, why Europe um, had to denigrate Africa. I mean I think uh, Dr. Easterling answered that correctly. And and then what we need to do is knowing what has happened to us, let's not preoccupy ourselves with that. Let's focus right. on building out our knowledge, excavating it and teaching it, right? right. And, and, you know, documenting it. Let's focus on, on the positives of ourselves and our history. Right. That, is what, that is why I admire, you know, everyone on this platform, you know, who are writers, who are thinkers, who are learners. It's so important. And you talk about um, uh, this culture is dying off. We we do have we do have work on our hands, right? It's you know the work uh, the task at hand is, is imminent, so we have to work over time. Um, not saying that we should get burnt out, but we have to continuously find effective ways to bring millions of Africans to this to this knowledge. We have to do that, um, and we have we we make sure we have to make sure that we don't relent our effort in in bringing millions of African, Africans into this knowledge so that they know um, what their ancestors left them. They understand the dying culture and, yeah. and at least they can continue to propagate it. Yeah. So yeah. thanks for letting yeah, me actually chime in there. Yeah, yeah. Those are key. And, uh, you know, I don't want to give too much attention to, to Europeans because Europeans did what they did, and we know what they did, and um, we can we can move on regardless of them. You know, I don't like to give a lot of attention to uh, to them because it, it, it we we lose our focus, and we need to be focused on building ourselves and, and moving on um, past you know their oppression. They their their oppression. We're gonna they're gonna do what they do, and it doesn't matter what they do. What matters is what we do with our time with our energy and with ourselves. That, that's what matters, is what we do, what we do. And, uh, and uh, along the way, there might be some European allies. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if, 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 if those are, I mean, and there are some of them, yeah. we're gonna w let's welcome them and let's work together. Yeah. But our focus is very clear. Our focus is on identifying, excavating, and building up of indigenous African systems. That's right. You know? So, um, and at the end of the day, we are all Africans after all, right? right, if, right. if they could only come to that realization, you know, even Europeans and the Chinese and, you know, everyone are yeah. all Africans. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, that would be, you know, for me, people talk about the, the, the good message, the, the, the good news or the gospel. For me, the gospel is, is what we have. The gospel is yeah. we are all Africans. And the gospel is we are beautiful because we yeah. are all made of stardust. That yeah. is the good news, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, there is no, sweet, there is no sweeter message than, than, and there is no sweeter message of unity than the fact is a fact that we are all Africans. We are all our roles yeah. from East Africa, yeah. right? And, and this beautiful civilization of, of Kemet gave us what we are enjoying today. That is beautiful. Why not, not just Africans celebrating this? Everybody should be celebrating this. Right, yeah. You know? But we, we won't wait for others to celebrate. Let's start celebrating it first. Yeah. And then perhaps they can also join, uh, join in.
Yeah, and that, and that, that is important as well. You know, uh, to celebrate ourselves um, and to <coughs> be, um, <coughs> excuse me, to be comfortable with who we are. And this is not a, a path to say, you know, you know, one culture is greater than the other, because um, we're just we're just humans, right? We're just trying to find our way on this planet. So if we can all put together our collective knowledge, you know. African knowledge goes with the Asian knowledge, goes with European knowledge, goes with Mesoamerican knowledge. And we all bring all this knowledge together as a human family. We can move forward, move this planet forward in, in dynamic ways. We can, we can kiss the stars before we even know it. You know, we can be there if we, we put the, uh, the effort together as, as a human family. And that's, that's to me, the point that we are trying to repair uh, an arm of the human family uh, in order so we can all move together uh, with purpose and, and with direction and with focus. Any more uh, questions? It's uh, after 11. Uh, you know, any other questions? Let me look at the chat. All right. Thank you guys for all your uh, comments. I appreciate the, I appreciate the love. Um, for those in the class, uh, um, turn in your assignments whenever you get a chance. I will um, uh, put out the stuff for, uh, put out the information for um, the next module, module four, which will be our last module. So next week will be our last week together on this platform. Um, so, um, please bring your questions and comments and, and do what you can with the assignments and we'll move forward with that. I think uh, I, I, my internet, uh, I, think I, say, I sent to you a concern about the, the quiz. So, yeah, I got, uh, I got yeah. it. Yeah, I got it. I'll respond. <laughs> I, didn't uh -huh. I, heard a, I heard a voice, but it's hard to hear. Yes, I think my, my net is not good, but uh, I, I, ha I have a question for the host, is it? Uh, can you can you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, uh, we I just wanted to, to, to hear from your side from the Osiri University, right? What what are, what are, what are they doing? Because you see, knowledge is normally stored in main books, so, and if we can extract all these uh, herbal medicine or traditional sort of medicine and put them in the books. You know, I just wanted to, to hear what what are they doing so so far? Maybe it can be used as a as a something to look for. Maybe though this is not my area. I was just here to learn and hear more about uh, medicine. Yes. All right. The, uh, doctor. Uh... Carlo, did you get that? I didn't get all of it. Some of it was... No, I didn't uh, hear him very well. Um, would you, uh, Osana, would you please type type your question in the chat room? And, um, and I, I see this question from uh, Lawrence Davis. This is how can we continue to want unity uh, when they are kill when they kill us or when they are killing us? Yeah. Um, it is very difficult to to fight, um, you know, fight in this in the storm uh, while we're uh, also being, uh, you know, receiving blows from the side and the front. Um, but again, that's just you know that's how we uh, we must work. Um, that's at, at this point what, what how we don't have many choices. If we want to move forward, we're going to have to 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 move regardless of them. Um, and they they can try to kill us, but you know they they can't kill our ideas. They can't kill our spirit, right? They can they can kill me tomorrow, but I've already passed my knowledge on to another person. So because of that, you know, it, I will I will continue to live. I'll continue to live through through you know what I share. You know when I when I speak to you, I'm sharing a piece of my heart that piece of my soul. So that will go on regardless of if I die tomorrow, if I'm killed tomorrow, 
it wouldn't matter because uh, I've already, you know, put it out. I've put my spirit self out there, put my spirit out there, and that will carry on. And we all must do the same thing, you know, um, to keep this this process going. We we must share who we are. We must share what we know and and help others. That's how we continue to live and continue to live, regardless of how long this physical body uh, uh, will will manifest here. And I see this. Um, why is it difficult for uh, whites to accept traditional medicine, our traditional medicine? Um, it's, I would say it's the assumption of supremacy, the assumption that they uh, are always right, that they know best. They have this assumption and, and underline the word assumption uh, and they, they run through the world with this assumption. This assumption of, is of course incorrect. So we, regardless of how, what they assume, we have to continue to do our thing. And to say, yeah, we should not wait for others to accept our traditional medicine. Uh, th yeah, right. We should study and keep going regardless. Um, Europeans are going to do what they do. And they have a pattern. And uh, at this point in our, uh, in our historical progression, their pattern is obvious. So we must do what we do regardless of what they're doing. We can't let them stop us or anybody else stop us for that matter. Uh, we just have to continue living and continue growing. Why? Because that's what we're here for. We're human beings. We need to, to develop this, this, develop ourselves, uh, work with our planet, and, and do the best we can do to ensure that we uh, survive as a species. Yep. Yeah, food, uh, someone said food security is an issue. Yes, it is. It's definitely an issue. Uh, and that's why it's important to uh, to to go to our traditional um, uh, uh, scientists, you know, because they understood how to keep food, how to grow food, and combine our traditional sciences with modern day advances to ensure that people are fed and that people are able to grow. Anybody else? Any other questions? All right. Uh, I will see you guys next week, uh, Friday, for our last class. Uh, same uh, link. I'll send the link throughout the middle of the week, and we'll be in conversation throughout the week as well. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you guys next week for our last class. And thank you for your time, and thank you for your attention. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Thank you very Hello. Hello. Yes, thank you very much for embellishing us with the required knowledge that we really need for us to know who we are and what we are made of. Until we know who we are, as applicants, and the resources that make us not be able to have the confidence that we need to compete as competitors for a secure global advantage. So I'm really grateful to be part of this session and I wish and I desire to be part of the remaining sessions. Thank you so, so much. Yes. And I'm uh, just let you know, I'm putting my email for everybody. If you want to talk about this further or just talk about anything related to Osiris University, I'm putting my email in the chat right now so you, we can uh, stay in communication. OK, thank you. Yes. Just maybe, just maybe an information uh, for the members who have just attended today. Uh, let's try to invite other people also. Yes. Uh, just as we have today our numbers in Greece, next Friday let's invite more people so that we are enriched all together with this bright and very, very important knowledge that we need at this particular moment as children and people of Africa in general. 
that's a that's a good point. So like so like tomorrow we do have another se uh, session on collective action, right? Yeah. So you should yeah. definitely invite folks. It's gonna be uh, what time? It's starting. Uh, it's uh, uh, nine a.m. EST uh, for uh, for Gina, uh, GMT. I think that's uh, two or two p.m. Yes. Two p.m. GMT. So so yes. so it's basically like one hour before this this time. Yes, today, one right? hour before yes. this time. Yes. So we'll that, be talking that's, about that's, that's uh, tomorrow. Yeah, we're talking about um, uh, NSARS and uh, Black Lives Matter and um, Afro Afrocentricity tomorrow. So it should be a good talk tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Yes. Looking forward to you guys as well. All right. Yes, thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.